Hello, we got Test Deals game number two. It's Saturday afternoon, Stack v. Stack in the Coliseum. We have, oh my goodness, uh, I'm not counting all those. A ton of people in the spectator slots, probably 12, 13, 14, 15, some, something like that. That's my guess. Team 1 ANS, Team 2 OSP, Sumi K, Hellcringe, Rin, and Scalord on Team 1, Internet Explorer Series, Mango, Sir Boom Lover, and Lena on Team 2. Hellcringe is Hunter. And Lena is uh, Indigo. We're on Tumbleweed. There have been some complaints about pillars. And hey, that, that's great. Normally everybody uh, thirsts, lusts, mournfully, desperately after pillars and bitches when I changes it from that. But uh, maybe we can get some games on Tumbleweed and some games on Nexus Eye and have some more interesting matches. Which is good. I'm down here with the OSP team. Red and black. Who is this? Oh, this is Mango. You can tell from the uh, the nameplate. Let's take a look at these ships. Series Mango has two plasma T30s on pontoons, which is kind of odd. And he's only got two plasma cannons per bulk freighter, which is a little risky. We'll see how that goes. And two MMTs. No, one Bloodhound, one MMT. Boom Lovers! Looks like he's rocking the calf fleet. No, this is a Torp Tug Swarm. Okay. How how many how many we got here? Oh my god. Yeah, this is one solid unit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ships in this. Seven of which are torpedo ships. <laughs> I look forward to it. Internet Explorer has one 450 broadside with some decoy containers on the side and back. Or uh, the broadside, the rear broadside. As well as 100 mm on the top and bottom and in the PD slides. He's also got MMT, MMT, MMT. Three of them. And gun shuttle, gun shuttle, gun shuttle. Three of them. Indigo. Has one 450 Acela with services and Aurora hard kill. We'll see how that goes. I'm seeing a uh, certain someone with Surrender Voxel, so maybe that'll help deal with that. Slightly. Or maybe it'll just get devoured. We shall see. He's also got two monitors in Escort of the Acela. Oh, this is, this is kind of the classic person who doesn't really know what they're doing on OSB build. One for Diocello, two escorting monitors. Oh, it is good to see the standard C90 did get some buffs. Diocello got some power buffs. So hopefully this fleet performs okay, since it's so common for whatever reason. We've also got one EWR tug. Mango, we've already gotten two Mango. Okay, Hellcringe Hunter is playing Yes God. For those of you who don't know, that's an S2H Voxel with that's all the offensive armament. And it's got half HEKP, half HEI, their command guided. Some are programming it right at this very second. What's being fired? Okay, presumably sees uh, the bullseye over at the corner. The Bloodhound, rather. Let's follow these missiles in while we start going through the other fleets. Scalord has double Axfords, as someone had mentioned in the text chat earlier. It's got rebounds on it, but those rebounds do not have buffs. And that's a real problem. Rebounds kind of need RCCs to be well. I've been uh, arguing the liner, that they actually. shouldn't for a real long time, but that's... Not going to change. We got a very expensive Plasma 100 bulk freighter here. It's about to eat shit to these missiles. Grape coming in, doing nothing. AMM's coming in, doing nothing. Some Pavis getting some work done. But, oh, yeah, look at that damage. Just needs uh, another volley or 450 follow-up. Yeah, the Axford's already firing 450 HE into this bulk freighter. And they're going to start knocking things out. It's 181 down. It's the antenna down. Oh, yeah, this thing's going to start having big problems. We're going to start going through the rest of the ENS fleet. We've got Sumike on one. Pretty standard fighting voxel here. Anchoring what seems to be a cap fleet. Yeah, S2, S2. S2, and these are standard S2s, not hybrids. Okay, and those are all kind of in the same area, too. So this isn't technically a cap fleet. Also, has got one jam corvette covering for the sprinter. There's another... Blast to S2s. They seem to have gone off into space. So I have no idea what happened there. They might have been fired at the Spyglass track, and that just sends them into the great beyond. Who knows? Vryn bringing beam destroyers. Hey, look at him go. Look at him go. He's already beaming something, and that's a dead shuttle. 
As you can see here, beams still have their killing potential just as good. They just don't have quite the sustain or burst sustain, if I can call it that, which is oxymoronic, obviously. But the capacity of the beam destroyer to just hold down the left mouse button and beam, baby, beam until and there are no ships left, which to beam is uh, has been reduced. But it's still quite able so to kill. You noticed something shuttles. interesting about REM's fleet, by the way, which is that it's mine. <laughs> uh -huh. Very nice. Xenophon getting a little Thank bit of uh, Greek nice. representation here. It's got uh, whip DDs. That's pretty good. I respect it. With oh, are those whip? I thought I switched those to Raider. Oops. Spy frigs. Tactical mobility, good. <laughs> And one, two, three, four capping sprinters, three of them torps, one of them uh, very dead. Has managed to get the natural. Well, no, it didn't actually. I can't read colors. Uh, OSP has that. Bombshell killed decapper very quick. I see. Yeah, Bombshell's been given a pretty significant... Well, the C90 in general has been given pretty significant buffs. The Hedge is a lot more dangerous to capitals. The Bombshell's a lot more dangerous to small ships. It has more damage raised, does the same amount of damage per race. So it's a... Uh, I think Math Bob did a math. I don't know, Bob! And, and it's uh, <laughs> about 60% higher. OSP has all the midpoints. No, they do not have Delta. But they have managed to capture Alpha, which is surprising. Where are these? Where are, they, what are these beams doing? What are you doing? Beams not covering Alpha. Why, why is this here? Why is this pointed here? All right. Well, we have one beam destroyer covering the uh, ANS natural, uh, which is already being screened quite effectively by the entire ANS fleet. So that's not really going to help that much. And then another beam destroyer overlooking Delta, but it's in kind of an open spot, and I have a feeling it's going to get missiled. In fact, there have been a few missiles sent this way, but they're MMT missiles, so the AMMs are able to handle them. Quite effectively, we have an S2 dump going out here, going after the Bloodhound. Tug, is the chaff going to handle it? These are Axe Sivars! Sivar S2s! Womp womp. Yeah, nothing you can do about that. That is one dead Bloodhound. OSP weakened a little bit on their right side. ANS. The use of this going for a bit of a push with these Axfords and even the Missile Voxel capturing a point. All right, so you'd never, ever want to do this, by the way. <laughs> it's so risky. Uh, if there was a container boat on the other team, this ship would be dead. Or if there's j just some missiles. Yeah, in fact, this uh, MMT might come over here and missile that Voxel with its anti-defender missiles, and that is one very expensive ship. Although I think he's going to get the cap off. OSP is not challenging this. Oh, there's the bulk freighter firing. Uh, unfortunately, 100 millimeter out of Voxel doesn't really do anything. Whereas a Voxel's worth of S2Hs is absolutely going to annihilate this poor little bulk freighter. <laughs> Let's see it! Gonk! Look at that! Oh, yeah. A couple AMMs crash into the side of it for good measure. For those of you who don't know, AMMs will not do damage to big ships, even though they have those impacts. Gonks, both large lockers, reduces DCX and the magazine to red. We got another volley coming out! From the Voxel, it's starting to take some damage. It's birthing, I believe? Yeah. Uh, Defenders, one of the launchers is taking a little bit of damage. He's programming another set of missiles now. I don't think you need much more. Ah, both bulk freighters are down here and in range. Yeah, ballistic bulk freighters just actually cannot handle the uh, the raw DPS of this sort of build. You really don't want to fight this in range of its missiles. You, you gotta fight it around angles. Or shoot it with a long range shit or jam the hell out of it. Because otherwise, well, this happens. Uh, it's one basically dead bulk freighter. I guess this could technically resurrect, but it's going to take forever, and it's not going to be very combat capable after that happens. And the other bulk freighter is continuing to get shelled. Why is my music turned off? It hasn't. It's, it's just one of the end of the tracks. It's very quiet. Okay. And that's second bulk freighter dead. Uh, I don't think it's gray. Yeah, oh yeah, it's gray. Bye-bye, and Mango gets bonked out. 
very fast. All right, we've still got... OSP's got Boom Lover over here on this flank uh, with these Torp Tugs, ready to lay a trap and dumpster some ships. Fortunately, ANS has given up that side of the map. They're not over there. So until these Torps figure out that there's a big push going on, which they really should already, honestly, and rotate. Although right now, oh, this is this is painful. Almost none of the ships on ANS are on contact. There's one spy frig that's spotted and getting shelled by bombs, and one dead sprinter up top that is also spotted and getting ignored, obviously, because it's dead. Meanwhile, uh, we got about eight and a half thousand points of ANS flying over the top here. Let's get a, let's get a screenshot. This is cool. I like that. I like that the big wide angle view. And they're looping around in the OSP spawn. They're crushing the bulk freighters on the way. It's going to be a big problem for the OSP. They've lost their main combat element. All they really have... Oh no, the Acelo and the monitors are way, way outside of the map and not controlling any valuable space whatsoever. Air attacks. Down Air next floor winning a beam fight? Okay, not that one. Not this one. Let's turn on. Let's see, yeah, Vryn, I'm not sure what Vryn's doing with his beam destroyers. Vryn's not much of a BDD guy, which is fine. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, I see it, I see it, I see it. The Doom's gonna come around here, the corner here. That beam DD is pretty off angle. With a whiplash, it's gonna be very slow to turn and get its nose on target. Oh, the Doom is not a revolver. It's a 450. Right. He's trying out the 450s. 100 mil will penetrate beam destroyer armor. Uh, although I think you need 100 mil AP. No, that HE is doing a little bit of damage when it lands. The track's not that good. What we're needs to do here is just pop up to cover and not get shot by this right now. Yeah. But uh, too late. Yeah, it's, it's too late. This is just going to die for free. That's why the, the original version of this has Raider and not Whiplash. And OSPs. the MMT makes it onto Delta. Yes, it does, under the cover of the Doom. Really, those Beam Destroyers need Prowlers. I mean, the Angular Thrust debuff will be a problem, but it could work. Got some S2Hs coming out, going after tug on delta they might kill it yeah simmt's already kind of beat up bonk bonk and now it's a little more beat up bonk and now it's a little more beat up there's also some 450 shells coming in no 120 though you really want that oh there's a little 120 i think what's all these things nope just 450 i can't read the shells womp womp very sad Vastel's going to get pizza we have uh we do have Vastel pizza Also, one thing, Skylord's experts look at the internals on those things. It is cursed. Yeah, we've been needing to have a talk with Skylord about his fleet builds, but that'll that'll have to happen in the AAR. Someone, someone do that. I forgot to last time because Hunter was too busy bitching about pillars. OSP does get the cap on Delta. Um, Blue Barrel's still just sitting behind this rock. Okay, he's, he's finally turned his engines on and is going to start playing the video game. Uh, it's a little too late, though. OSP does have a cap advantage. Go for Bravo. Tab gets beamed. Very easy. Sesamp. Yeah, and I think ANS has grouped up enough over here that if these torpedoes get launched at any of these ships, they're just going to get hard killed. Uh, unless the Axford split off from the main group. Axfords in general are the toughest ships to missile. Double Axfords standing right next to each other. They've got some of the best uh, point defense in the video game, aside from a big squadron of low ish point beam destroyers. You, know, you can put three or four of those together and put a hard kill on all the mounts. It's hard to punch through that. Doom finishes off. Beam ship here. Beam never able to get its nose on target. Very sad. Sumike may scout the tug blob. Alright, looks like the tug blob and the corvette blob 
siding each other up. Corvettes are burn pinged. Tugs are spotted too, even through the jamming. So the yeah, track's not very good though. Here comes some S2s. What are these? A red act. Turn off your jammers. He's not turning off the jammers. Well, I have some bad news for your jam ship. Uh, the bad news for your jam ship is that they're getting charged the grazer bill. Ooh, two lands punched through anyways. Oh, the man. The middle the one gets... looking at the decap. Cord, lost its reactor, lost birthing, lost the magazine. Hunter's trying to get on to the Delta Cap. Yeah. Voxel's pre-positioned. <laughs> the Doom's already launching decoy containers and firing cannons. Right as this ship comes around, but the track on this is not very good. The Voxel's moving. Yeah, nose on 100 milli. HE isn't punching through realistically and doing much damage. Yeah, look at that. Hunter full dumping his salvo size. I feel those are going to go into the rock? No, they all go. They all launch. Almost immediately staged. Some AMs come out. Most of the missiles punch through that. And that's a really good angle for those. It's not down the nose. Oh, a huge dump of AMMs out of Internet Explorer's Doom directly into the rock because of the angling. Very unfortunate. Looks like, yeah, Container Decoy is not able to, uh, to lure these. Hunter properly recognizing that this is kind of the most dangerous ship on OSP right now with Mega losing his liners. Oh, and that is dead. OSP demoted to an Acello and two monitors that are in Narnia. And the Torp Tug Swarm, which is just vibing. They're hanging out behind rocks. They're having fun. I think they're gonna try yeah, to get up on the trying. voxel, but they're they're just not gonna catch it because it's a bunch of ships flying in formation versus one ship, and the formation is very obviously on rel, so they're generally gonna be slower versus one ship on uh, well, not formation. Presumably, this thing is double raider, I believe. One raider, one reactor. Oh, Every nice. single ship on the OSP side, with the exception of two MMTs from Internet, is trying to kill that one Vauxhall. Well, that's going to be good for the ANS team. All that distraction is going to allow them to get a capping advantage. They've been, even through all this, they've had a cap disadvantage. And they're about 150 points down. Hunter not able to cap Delta. He's got some Torps coming in. Oh. You're going to need to fire more Torps than that, Chief. Unless he's got... Oh, these have decoys. He's going to all slam into the rock. Uh, it's going to be close. There goes two. A lot of the decoys went into the rock as well. Yeah, these defenders are going to be able to clean this up. Easy clap. <laughs> RPD, very good. Experts coming over here to uh, screen for the missile voxel. And it's not able to get that delta cap. Not able to get the Charlie cap for some reason. Okay, this voxel is finally headed down there. Uh, it is, however, staying in formation with a sprinter instead of just sending the sprinter in. I don't, I don't know what that's about. And they're also moving at a really weird angle. So it looks like CMK is holding heading to face all the ships that are behind the rock over there, instead of burning down towards that point as fast as possible. Bit of a micro mistake there. The Torp Tug team is now under fire from the Axfords. I'm getting a little bit of cover from the Acela Monitor group. In fact, it looks like yeah, the Axfords are firing at the Acelo. Which is absolutely the wrong target. Gotta really gotta go for the Gigadump fuck you ships and not the support crew. 
Because, uh, this, this, this is what's gonna happen. All these missiles are gonna get launched, and half of them are gonna get killed by the rock, and it's actually going to be trivially hard killed. The enemy is we'll see. Zone these decoys come out. Oh yeah, look at all this flak. Destroying the decoys with ease. Defenders are gonna clean up. Couple of the missiles are gonna miss. Yeah, he's done. He's don't have enough agility. So these are all this is gonna miss. Wow, that was uh, that was one of the most depressing missile strikes I've seen in a while. Very unfortunate. Like Subi listened to you. He uh, just detached his jam from return and is moving his voxel back up. <laughs> yeah, I see that. It's finally getting the uh, Charlie cap. About two minutes later than they really should have, but that's okay. It's get, get, getting the cap and steadily running the OSP out of munitions. And it's securing a military victory. We've got an S2 dump here. Oh, Grazer ain't going to cut that. Booping the snoot of one more tug, doing heavy damage. I think he's Axford is going to be able to get behind this rock. Can rock PD a lot of these missiles? No, they're not. they're not angling properly. And, oh, I see, I see. They can't get behind the rock. Couple lands. Bonk, bonk, bonk. A bonk, bonk, bonk. What is the warhead on these? Because that was a lot less damage than I was expecting for that. I mean, I guess both Axfords are really heavily damaged. Got uh, Internet Explorer playing fuck fuck games on Bravo and apparently doing pretty well. Oh, yeah, look at that beam. 14%. I think that's below the fly firing threshold. I think I think beams have to be at fifteen percent to be fireable. No, it's green on the DC on the indicator light board. Or I, I think, think it's ten percent for beams. Maybe. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's out of range right now, so yeah, it has to be. More torps coming in. It's not gonna take long for that to get knocked out though. Let's take a look at this torp valley. And now that these uh, Axfords are heavily damaged, yeah, more Torps can easily finish them off. No interrupts on them. Uh, I think that was a waste because that was the last Torps, and that you know these Axfords were, were already fucked. The Torps didn't really do any more fucking. That's unfortunate, but uh, it might have been for the best anyways because it looks like these Tugs are just going to die to missiles from everybody else on the map. Hunter's got S2s incoming. I think and... Friend's Beam just got shot out by 100 mil, which means uh, Internet might be able to take the... Ren does have a restore. It's a big problem for ANS. They really, really need to have a capping advantage for quite some time. They're down on the points advantage. Well, by Lobster. Unfortunate. Womp womp. And now we've got RPF coming into these tugs, which have eaten a reactor crit and quite a few missiles, so that's going to tear them to shreds. One twenty RPF with no armor is immensely painful. This is two fifty RPF. That is also immensely painful. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, the sprinters are firing the 120 RBF, I see. I thought I saw some small shells in there somewhere. <laughs> why is... Why is this voxel named Curse? Not Curse, duh. Just Curse. It is a Curse. Yeah, now this thing predates, um, yes, God, actually. This is Hunter's, like, OG. s h Oh, nice. Oh, shit. This thing has also been reactor created? No, 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 no. It's just eating some plasma on the top. The enemy is securing zone atlas. ANS capping alpha with a spy frig. Don't see that very often. There's nothing on the OSP team down here. Nothing to challenge that cap, so they're going to be able to get it. No telling how long they're going to be able to hold it. Cello and the monitors steadily shelling this missile voxel and all the hits it's taken over the course of this game are really starting to add up and taking their toll. 
This thing's gonna get knocked out of here before too long and be down. No longer be able to cover the rear side of the map. It's a problem. They really need Bravo and Echo. OSP. Pretty much down to one MMT. And then the completely healthy Acelo and Monitor team. Which have been staying at extremely long range. And it's, it's going to pay off. The ANS fleet is down to uh, one fighting voxel. And one orange 14% beam destroyer. And that's it as far as killing potential goes. I see Zaxfers. Well, one of the Axfers is able to uh, get fighting fit again. I think he's lost a bunch of his buff modules. Oh, I see. These aren't... These aren't using those. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Oh, oh dear. Ammo elevators. Oh, dear. Yeah, so for those of you playing our home game, please put ammo elevators on your gunships. They're extremely important. Uh, you do not ever want to sacrifice them. You don't have to have five, but you definitely have to have three on your capitals, and more is better. Rem finally gets a B-mount on the MMT. Let's see it. Oh, God, God damn it. It's already over! So something it's that has bad. been added to the tactical map, but has not been... Uh, I haven't had the benefit of witnessing yet, is beam effect. Okay, this thing's going to get pulled up watching, above be... 10%. And we can bear witness to the laser, although it is eating 450 from the top. Ooh, one of those just sure. landed through that beam, quitting it, knocking it down to six. There it is! Oh, that looks fucking sick. Look at that. <laughs> I know, right? I love that. I'm so happy with that. I've, I've been complaining about no beam visual effect on the tap map for months and months and months and months. And that is... That is really cool. I like that. I'm very happy with the end result. And we've got one retreating Axford. AMS, in the meantime, has managed to grab every single point except for Delta? Yeah, OSP all back trying to cap Bravo. All their fighting fit ships. It's, it's just an overcommitment. They really need to split their ships and spread out as ANS has done. And start capping points. Anus is catching up fast on the caps. They're now only 40 points down. And it's looking like they're going to start taking the lead here shortly. The Acelo and the Monitors aren't really built for fighting in these close engagements. They're not really built for shooting sprinters either. I guess uh, the bomb. Well, they're firing at an Axford. That's definitely a good target. Ooh, look at this thing. It's taking quite a bit more damage since we last checked it out. And that's probably due to the Acelo... And the old hash round. Even know what uh, Indigo's talking about? From range, I assume. Oh, okay. I was trying to figure out what those last two words were, and I'm like, I did not speak. I did not speak. I'm sorry. But uh, ANS pulling ahead, ten points over the top. Corp tugs hanging out on Delta. I think they're going to be able to keep the point. The Voxel and the Sprinter are headed up onto that point. They're going to be able to... Oh, boy. There goes this jam shuttle. That's going to be going down real fast to this RPF. It's got only a basic. No auxiliaries. Bellbirds aren't known for their high HP. So this thing's going to be disintegrating quite quickly. It looks like the Torp Tugs don't have any offensive armament on them. So even though... Okay, OSP recognizes it's over. Or maybe it's just Boomweaver. Yes. 
I was about to say the Torp Tugs, even though they can't contest the point, they could force the Voxel here to stay on the point. But yeah, it's 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 time. Turn that the remnants of the OSP fleet. Would uh, have a fighting chance against the ANS, and they did. They did have a fighting chance, but it's it's over. Oh my god! Okay, there we go. While it is fun having 10 minutes of my life wasted, it is actually not. There's also, oh my god, a ton more people have showed up to watch these testing games. Not too surprising. It's been nice how well behaved everybody's been. They've been doing uh, good, useful callouts. Not a, not a ton of crosstalk. Good, good testing environment. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, almost 40,000 on the S2H Voxel. Not quite 20 on the axe rays. Oh yeah, we need to talk to Scalard when he when he gets up here. I'm here. Okay, so your internals are your ships. Why are they the way that they are? Um, I don't think I've played this fleet for like a year and a half. I think this is like back when the OSP initially released, I may have made this fleet. And I ah. filled with the bit for testing to just make it what sure was under the points. All right. Value. Yeah. Okay. So there's just a couple of really important things that you want in all your gunships. Uh, ammo elevators, very important. You had some mount gyros. Those are not very useful. They're not worth bringing, except in very specific niche circumstances. And those general purpose builds are not those circumstances. Uh, mm -hmm. And you want, uh, you really want to fill up those module slots with things. You right. Also, especially if you have uh, rebounds, either use rebounds and RCCs, or use stone walls. Uh, How because, does the points work out on that? Uh, that's kind of complicated. I think. Well, so what you sacrifice for the rebounds and the RCCs are your fire rate. They do wind up being cheaper than stone walls, and they wind up being a little better than stone walls. Um, but you do you do give up those slots for ammo elevators, right? Uh, on the double Axford fleet, it's kind of hard to slam stone walls in there, anyways. Especially now that defenders are all five points more expensive, and you're going to need those defenders. Um, mm -hmm. So it is going to be it is going to be a little trickier to do that. You're uh, getting a little staticky, Dark. God damn it! Yeah, my mic is freaking dying, and I'm going to have to get. I'm gonna need to get a new one. I noticed in the last conquest video and in one of the more one of the public uploads, it was really fuzzy too. It's just annoying it's not if you that don't bad. listen to it. Yeah, but I wanna to try to not inflict poor audio quality on people. There. Okay, so what else did we learn from that map? OSP Lena, who is Indigo, um, you had some, like, anchor fighting ships, but you were flanking them around the outside of the map like skirmishers, and they weren't able to do their job as effectively. When you have capital ships like that, they do kind of need to be in the middle and getting shot at sometimes. You don't, you don't want to seek getting shot at, but it's important to be in there and fighting to agree. I understand that. This is definitely the beam map. Um, but when you're way off to the side like that, you don't contribute very much to your team and to the fight. Uh, the Torp Tugs had a similar problem for a good chunk of the map. They did manage to get something done against those Axfords, 
I had a I had a flat spawn one because I spawned at the side where the big ships that I wanted to go at weren't, and then two I wanted to flank and surprise the two experts that were moving close to D, and then I saw all of my ships being spotted, not knowing where they're coming from, so I started to burn through. So those three uh, sprinters or whatever the fuck they were above me, firing missiles at me, and I was like, well. I don't really know, know where to go now, so I might as well double back and then try and uh, flank the experts then. But yeah, just bad positioning at the start. That's yeah, nice and then I, so... I, I saw your tugs and I warned the experts, so he started backing off. Yeah, see point, that, but... see that, yeah. So uh, what you do when uh, you realize that you have set an ambush and the entire enemy fleet is on the other side of the map from your ambush, is you move to go they see me. deal with that. Okay, well, that's a risk you kind of have to then, take. Then. Sitting behind a rock is not really accomplishing anything. You also could have moved a lot sooner. Uh, OSP discovered the all all the shit over there really early and you, you could have tried to go for the transition to support the team. Uh, generally, being passive gets you killed. Sometimes it can work really well. If you, like, if you were in a spot that was covering two points that uh, OSP controlled, that would have been a really strong thing to do. But you're only sort of covering one. And yeah. Was... Even then, uh, there was another ship that was covering that point. So that that's kind of the issue. There is. It's not that laying an ambush is bad and even even if your opposing force is on the other side of the map sometimes it's worth sticking around but you you need to lay an ambush in a place that controls uh enough space and enough cap points that it's worth having three thousand points worth of fleet or however much you're spending on the ambush sitting and not contributing to the main fight it's kind of like how mines work that's why you dump those small clutches on points to uh, very cheaply and easily cover and prevent small ships from getting over there. Because what what a torp blob does is it's got a about four and a half, five kilometer range of no capitals are allowed in this area. Or else. Um, but you, you, you have to leverage that. You have to put it somewhere important. And tugs are fast enough that you can do that. Another thing I uh, encountered that I had trouble with was uh, I was thinking I could go over there, but one, I'd get spotted, and by the time I get there, um, half the fleet, would already, everybody would already be cut to piecemeal, and then I'd be throwing myself into the fire. So I, my mindset was either I go there and get taken apart piecemeal, or I stay here with the other other side of the fleet and help out there. Because if I was, if I was going to go there towards the experts, I would have been spotted way ahead. They would have known, it would have pushed back, and then I would have just been missed out piecemealed. Yeah, I would have, with my three Corvettes, sent more yeah. missiles down your tugs to try to wither them down before they hit the experts. If I would have supported, I would have, if I would have supported two liners, I would have died. We realized pretty quickly after I fucking murdered the two LNs above E that we were able to sort of encircle D and force the rest of your team into that one area. So, like, that's why I went over to D side. I had Scallard and um, Sumi pushing over towards C. It's sort of just like enveloping around D instead of all running in there at the same time. True. Uh, but again, we couldn't see because all of our uh, EWAR or the big fucking radars got taken out real quick and then all that's... the other... All right, that's enough listening to that. Uh, as we've said before, there's a lot of good players around here. We also have some not so good players around here. That's fine. All experience levels, all skill levels are welcome and encouraged, especially when we're doing testing, because uh, not everyone is a top 20 player. That's, you know, by, by very definition, that's an exclusionary group of people. So it's important to have everybody come down and participate in these testing games. We did! I don't think we discovered much balance-wise that time. Um, 
but we did have some teaching games, some teaching moments. Hopefully some people learned some stuff. We'll see. And boom, boom lover has a bit of a, a bit of a tradition of not listening to other people's advice, which is unfortunate. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Indigo seemed perceptive, which is always nice. I think Indigo's a blue. No, Scalar's a blue. Indigo's just barely a silver. Cool, cool, cool. Looks like the next game is getting ready. If you want to participate in this sort of thing, in the testing, or in the discussion, or in the learning, come on down. Got a link to the Discord down in the description. And I uh, hope to see you there. I have considered this on multiple occasions, and I've asked the people on multiple occasions, and I've gotten mixed reviews i might be making a patreon at some point just to support and encourage myself to do the work on these videos because sometimes I, I constantly generate these backlogs and so that's why you often have like oh hey here here's a video getting uploaded that i recorded two months ago because uh, i've got so much other crap going on that it's hard to Hard to justify working on the videos. But uh, maybe, you know, if I'm making a tiny bit of money or feeling responsible for someone else's money that they are putting into this, I can put a little more energy into it, a little more effort, and get these up sooner. That, that's just me rambling. You don't need to... If you don't want to support this, you don't have to support this. That's fine. I don't, uh, this, is, this is not a requirement to these videos continuing to be made. Just something I thought might be nice to have. Yeah. M maybe that's down in the description. Maybe it's not. I don't know. We'll see. In any case, I'll see you in the Battle Space, dear viewer. Good night.